And, you know, and that's an important thing. You know, I'm glad you brought up boundaries, you know, because as readers and spiritual people who connect with spirit, I believe that every reader that works with guides, spirits, you know, angels or anybody else sets rules, limits and boundaries the same as you would with a kid saying, hey, I am open between this hour and this hour. I will knock or I will pray or I will ring a bell and I will be consistent on all those days and during those hours that I work. And during that time, you can come. After those hours, you leave me alone. (laughs) No, it's good. I, I really think a lot, especially new readers, don't understand that you really can put spirit on a schedule that that is a little bit more workable for you because I get a lot of readers and they were like, I didn't get any sleep because everybody was standing around my bed last night. I'm like, why, why were the spirit around your bed? And they wanted to talk. Well, you need to tell them to come back tomorrow morning when you're up. But I've never had a problem. If I say this is the time that I'm open to spirit. Normally that's the time they come through. But I think there's so many people that get into it. And they're opening up portals and opening up things. And they're like, I want you to come and be with me all the time. And that's what they do. You know, they're not going to, if you invite them, they're coming. My spirits know they don't bother me in the bathroom and they don't bother me in the bedroom. (laughs) Those are the two places they do not go. I not even hear it. Uh, Michael, you don't even let them come in the bathroom with you. (laughs) (laughs) No, you know, Ambrosine Laguerre, I had a, um, bone reading class with and right. she told me to sleep you know bring my bones into my bedroom and sleep with them and of course right. you know I had a hard time with this because I don't bring any spiritual things into that room because <laughs> all uh-huh. I do in there is sleep I don't want to be bothered you know, right. but she said I needed to bind, uh, bond more with my, <laughs> my bones so I brought them in and in the middle of the night, sound asleep, you know, and whenever I call my spirits, I always knock three times on my, my bove there, my altar. Mm-hmm. Middle of the night, I wake up to three loud knocks <laughs> and nobody's wow. at the door. The bedroom door? It was my bone set saying Hello. They were knocking <laughs> the same way I knock on my bove, though, my altar, which is where I put my, my bones when I'm not reading them. Because that's the way you communicate. So they yeah. thought they were communicating. It freaked me out, middle of the night. First thing I do is I get up and I start looking at all the video cameras. <laughs> Anybody at the door? No. <laughs> uh, that is it's weird, but you hear about it so much. I remember when I first started putting my altars up, my first one I had in my bedroom because I was sharing a house with my sister. So I was trying to contain my, my little area. And I remember I talked to an older woman and she said, you need to take that altar out your bedroom. They're going to be watching you doing nasty stuff. And I was like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? And it was the first time I ever really even thought about spirit being in, in your room with you. And so she was like, no, take it out. Now, of course, I'm like you. I'm in my room sleeping. But they do. I mean, I used to have stuff that would be rearranged. I'd wake up in the morning and it's like, what the hell? How did they get there? But it, it was what it was. Now all my altars definitely are out of my room, out of my bedroom. <laughs> well, you know, you need to have that because they don't always need to see what's going on. But the biggest thing is, you know, I don't even have a TV in my bedroom because I believe the bedroom is for two things only. Right now, it's only sleeping Um, (laughs) at some point, maybe something else. But, you know, I believe that that room is also very sacred and it's peace and quiet and alone time from anything spiritual. Ah, you know, I wish I could disconnect like that. I, I, I actually... I mean, sometimes I do put my cards under my pillow. And a lot of times for my personal readings, I will read for myself in bed. And I remember one time Candelo said, don't do that. And I get what he was saying, because he was saying you're opening up things. And this is your sanctuary. This is where you sleep. This is where you should rest. But I think that's the great thing about having elders that you can talk to that have done this 
and they understand what the consequences are, you know, why you don't need to do this. And that's why sometimes it's important to connect with people who are in your community who have been doing this longer because they give you they give you guidance on proper things or proper ways to do to do things that help you grow in a good way. Yeah. And, you know, I have a lot of wonderful and great friends, you know, you're included among them. Thank you. All the people that are on my show that come on the show, I I know. I personally pick every single person out. But I have people that I go to as well. You know, even being in the spiritual community for 30 years, doing readings, working in botanicas. Even I don't know everything. Nobody does. And sometimes I have to reach out and say, hey, have you ever had this happen? What do you do? You know, how can I change this or how can I stop something from happening? Am I doing something wrong? Because if we no. don't ask, we're well, stuck. You know what? You're right. Yeah, I think, you know, I don't think as, as, as seasoned as anybody, it, you never know anything or, or know everything. I should say that. Right. Never know everything. Because I think even starting out talking to people who were older than me and I was like, okay, that doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound right. Doesn't feel right. And then they would go to other people and learn something different and then come back and and tell me about it. So I think in this community, you really have to rely on people, elders, you know, that hopefully can give you guidance in the proper way. Because sometimes we don't see everything the same way. So you need that extra set of eyes. Yeah. And, you know, there's been a lot of people moving away from elders and elders that have begun to no longer speak and no longer pass on information because, you know, people are stealing information, stealing people's classes, you know, disrespecting the religion or appropriating, you know, religions and cultures, you know, and disrespecting those people that have spent their entire lives doing what we do exactly you know, it's sad because i think that there is tradition in a lot of things that we do yes. a lot of people are coming from blood ties they're coming from blood lines where this has been passed not only through generations but from past lives and the operative word is respect i think you're coming up with people that don't respect tradition they don't respect the blood lines they don't respect the wisdom and everything that goes into a lot of the things that we do. And some of them are participating in it, but they don't get it. They're disrespectful. So I think it is sad, but how can you discredit an elder? How can you discredit somebody who's gone before you? How can you steal information and, and, you know, pass it off as your own from somebody who's actually walked that walk? It's disrespectful. It is. And some people, unfortunately, believe that they are entitled. You know, I'm blessed. You know, I don't know if you know I'm white. <laughs> no shit! I didn't know that. <laughs> but, you know, I, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm a chocolate brother. <laughs> you know, I'm blessed because I have such a great group of friends. I have a lot of elders that I respect, that I promote, that I give back to the community, you know, All these people helped make me who I am. Right. And I'm lucky in the fact that I was allowed to walk that walk. I was allowed to get glimpses of their tradition. And then I was brought in and adopted because that's how I look at it. I'm adopted. You know, I have so much Irish in me, it's not funny. (laughs) <laughs> you know, but I've grown to love all these religions and traditions, you know, whether it's the Haitian Vodou, New Orleans Vodou, Espiritismo, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Ocha de Regla or Santeria, Palo, you know, all these traditions that I have learned and had glimpses of, I was privileged that they gave me and allowed me to participate. Right. You know, it's kind of like that old saying, don't shit where you sleep or where you eat. I agree. I agree. I think some people people get it and they are respectful 
And then you have some people, like you say, that feel entitled. But, you know, one thing I've learned, even in this short time, spirit will jump on your ass if you're not right. It may not be today. It may not be tomorrow, but it comes back on you. So if you're disrespectful and you're really not honoring the traditions, if you're not honoring the ancestors, you're going to get dealt with. And I think it's great that you're able to say, you know what, I was adopted into a tradition and I respect it. I, you know, I really I can honor it. I can honor the people that have been with me and taught. There are a lot of people out there who don't. But they use it to sell their products. They use it to do their websites. They do it to make money off their readings. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's disrespectful. There's a certain thing as respect and loyalty. And, And unfortunately, a lot of people don't get it because the dollar sign, I think, takes over for a lot of people. They really don't give a crap about tradition. No, they don't. And it is sad. I mean, you see it all over where people trying to, you know, people that have not been initiated into Santeria don't even have the like as doing ritual, trying to communicate yeah. and making up their own rituals that they have no idea who they're actually really calling, you know, what spirit they're actually working with. You know, they don't know the protocols. They don't know the right way to call. They don't know all the little nuances. It's true. I mean, if you if you get on some of these Facebook groups, these Wiccan groups, these uh, voodoo groups, a lot of them are people who this is a fad to them. This is something that is you wrap your head up, you know, you grab some beads and wear them around your neck and you chant a couple of times and you maybe make some money off of it. But there are a lot of people who are actually really new that are following uh, a lot of the information and it's wrong. And then you have these people three months later, oh, something's in my house, something is bothering me. And it's like, what happened? You called something in because you went off of information that wasn't even correct. So I think in this in this community right now, it is really it's kind of iffy. When I first came in, you know, I was all green. I thought it was kumbaya, love and light, namaste, (laughs) peace be with you. And then. I got fucked up by somebody and it made me realize, Lord, this is what, what is this? You know, it's not, it's not, you don't have the loyalty and you don't have the respect all the way across the board. There's some people that, that they don't go by that. It's not even in their vocabulary. So we, we deal with an interesting community right now, especially right now. Yes. You know, it's, it's, it's a really tough and a sad thing because I've seen so many elders pull back so many people that have so much to give that have gone silent because that respect is not there. That loyalty is not there. The oaths that you take in a lot of these traditions, you know, that go broken rather than being upheld. And it's sad. It's sad because there's so much wisdom. But I do feel like a lot of them need to be discerning anyway. You have some elders out there that are working with everybody and they're coming back and they're getting burned by people who they thought they could trust. You know, I'm looking into initiation. Initiation isn't cheap. Oh, it's not at all. So my whole thing is if I'm going to spend thousands of dollars, why would I do that and go through the ritual and everything that I need to go through to come back and be disrespectful? towards my elders or my people who have opened up their arms and accepted me in. Exactly. But you do have people that they're going to pay that. It's they're going to pay their money. They're going to wear their beads and they're going to sit up there and wrap their head or whatever. And it means nothing to them. The tradition, the symbolism of it means nothing to them. So I think in this community too, the elders, unfortunately for the ones pulling back, I think it's really just a matter of more discernment. You, need, you really need to divine who needs to be in your house, who needs who needs to be taught, who do you need to share wisdom with? But I have to say, <laughs> there's some shady motherfuckers out there, though, Michael. I mean, you, you got some no, going you both do. ways. And that's why, you, got, you know, as a person that is looking towards getting initiated in any tradition, you know, you owe it to yourself to do research, to ask questions. Yeah to ask about the person that you're going to be initiating with in the house, you know, how much the cost is going to be, what's entailed and what's involved, you know, and don't do it lightheartedly. 
because no. this is not a money making scheme. This is not something that you know we spend eight ten thousand dollars. 